Hey there, it's Commas Crypto here. And a while ago, I had spent a bunch of time trying to figure out the best way to track all of my crypto and NFTs and have it all in one sheet where I can quickly look at the overall value of my current portfolio and have it updated in real time or as close to real time as possible. And what I came up with was using the CoinGecko API to pull data into a Google Sheets and with that, what the, the data here shows then is pretty close to real-time data based on current prices for each crypto asset. Now, there is a bunch of manual usage here as well to make it so that the data is input correctly, as well as adding in and doing some addition for various costs when you're adding in gas fees and things like that. So the... The sheet itself is relatively straightforward from a, a general profit and loss standpoint here, but to give you just an idea of how I have it set up and how it works, the, the column on the far left is just a definitions column or the asset class itself, and then also some overall data here pooling in some NFT data, which I can show you that sheet as well. Now, the uh, across each of these these rows then is the, the cost column, the current value column, which is pulled from the the data here, either through CoinGecko or through Google Finance. For for Bitcoin and Ethereum, I have those pulling in through Google Finance. You can see here the, the, the formula here at the top is just the Google Finance formula, which updates relatively frequently. And then same thing with the Ethereum Google Finance. Now for some of the other ones like Cardano and then some of these other small caps here. I want to show you a couple examples there. I have these pulling in through the CoinGecko API, and there's just some code here that you can use to import data and grab the CoinGecko API. So the the first thing that we need to do is, is get that data into the sheet. So if you look here at the, the way this sheet is set up and the way this, this import data function works, it's equals import data, and then the the URL for the CoinGecko API to call in Cardano. And you can see here the ID is Cardano. So to copy this, this actual API call here, all you would need to do is change Cardano to whatever other asset or coin you want to track and want to have input into the sheet. The only tricky part there or here is where we run into a case where it's a small cap or a newer coin and it may not be shown in the by the name here for whatever reason. So in that case, then we have to call the contract ID. Now, the an example of that would be Stormax here. So with Stormax, it doesn't actually work with the just calling in or, or classifying it as Stormax here. I'll just show you as an example, if we change Cardano to Stormax, there's, there's no data shown here. So if we undo that and we get back to this API call here, the, the API call is a little bit different, and all we need to do is just change this to call the contract address. And if you're unfamiliar with how to get the contract address, if you go to Stormax here, you can see here on the actual page on CoinGecko, you have contract here on the right side. And all you have to do is hit copy, click to copy, and then you go back to the sheet. And let's just pretend that this is broken right now and not working. You'll see no data here. And then where the contract address is shown here, just paste that data in and it brings in the live and current Stormax price. Now, the other thing here, all that does is bring in the price and a bunch of other, other information. It, it calls in the entire data set for whatever you're calling in here, Cardano or Hive or Stormax or whatever. So what we need, I did here is broke this up into different columns to get to the price column separately. And what I did is this column L here is a split function. So it's it splits the, the data set that is being called in from this API. And then the next couple cells here are the actual split. So it splits the USD to the 243 here into two separate cells. And then this last function here is just getting the all of the data to the left of the the right two features here. So what you see then is just the actual price that we could then pull in over to here so that it's a nice clean layout. 
So all of this, this stuff over here is just functionality to get that data into the sheet. And then this makes it so it looks nice over here on the left side. Now, the other thing then is what you need to do is put your actual cost into column B. So if you bought 2000 ADA at $1.20 a piece, your cost would be 2400 plus any fees. I like to include the fees in here as well because that's the true cost. And then what this will show and will calculate is it'll get the current price here, then factor in your ROI, the current value, and then the current profit loss, which I just have this set to green if it's currently profitable or red if it's currently not profitable for you. And then the, like I said, these, these other columns are relatively self-explanatory. Now, the other thing here is if you're using something like Uniswap or any of the other DeFi platforms, the, especially with Ethereum, like I said, I like to include the gas costs into the, the cost here, which almost immediately and almost always will have you at a loss from the initial exchange, which is why in most cases to use something like that, it helps to have a larger balance or to be exchanging at least a thousand dollars from what I've seen. Because if you're doing a transfer of 200 or 500 and the gas fees 50 or hundred bucks, you're immediately down 10 or 20% and you need the that asset to run that much further for you to break even because they're going to have a cost on the, the back end when you want to transfer it back to Ethereum or Tether or USD coin or whatever. So just something to keep in mind from that perspective as well. Now, the other thing that I track in here is NFTs. And this is just pulling in data from this NFT sheet, which shows like this. So the, the top part here is what would be considered the current NFTs in the portfolio. And then the bottom part here would be NFTs that were sold. And as an example, I just used Loot and Board Ape, Board Ape Yacht Club. Now the cost here, again, I always include the fees and then the this pulls in the, the cost in Ethereum. So this would be the, the cost value of Ethereum and the USD cost based on the, the current Ethereum price. And then the current value. So this would be something that you would update manually, at least the way that's the way I do it. And if you knew the current floor for loot was two Ethereum or 10 or whatever, you could just put that in here and update your portfolio based on what the current floor is for these individual assets. And then it shows the current profit loss based on that current floor value. And then you can see here the, the overall cost of your NFT portfolio, the current value of your NFT portfolio. And then the down here would be sold NFTs. And these then would show and display in the total NFT profit loss because this would be realized. So same thing here, put in the cost for the asset itself, the sell value, and then you can put notes in here or if you minted this or bought it on a sale or whatever the, the case is, if you wanted to put notes here. And then again, same thing here, profit loss is calculated and then shows here. And then back on this sheet here, you see that there is the data pulled in here, gives you a total, total portfolio and you should be good to go. Now, every now and then what happens with CoinGecko, and I don't know if it's because it's there's too many calls to the API or what's going on, but every now and then it'll, it will break and it won't display data. So what I would do sometimes is manually go in and if I just change the USD at the end to US and then change it back to USD, it updates. So what you would see when it's broken sometimes is you'll either see value here, so we won't be pulling the data in, and you may still see the actual asset here, but in some cases you won't see the asset name here either. And like I said, all you do is change that USD to US, change it back to USD, and then it should update correctly here for you and display all that data. So just wanted to, to kind of go through this. This is a little bit more complex than some of the other videos I've seen on how to track your assets like this. But this is something that I like to have. It's helpful for me and thought maybe it could be helpful, helpful for somebody else as well. And the, the one last thing that I put in here is just a quick Ethereum calculator based on the current value of Ethereum. So for example, if you're thinking about 
buying an NFT for 0.2 or something, and you, or 0.25, and you wanna do the math quickly, you can just put that in here, and it'll show you the, the current US value of that, that much Ethereum based on what you're putting into this cell here. And I, I have that shown on both here. It does not pull the, the same data, so it won't carry over sheet to sheet the way I have it set up. So you can do it on either sheet and it doesn't really matter. And then from there, you can make that decision if you wanted to spend the 827 on that NFT or not. And just kind of a little, another helpful calculator here to have it in one spot if you have this sheet open as you're investing in or figuring out what, what you want to invest in. Hopefully this was helpful for you. And I should have some additional videos coming soon based on some additional data points and research and insights I've seen and what I'm learning in the cryptocurrency space in general, or more specifically in NFTs as well. And like I said, if I feel like I have some helpful information and some value I can add, I will plan to publish those videos. And if I don't publish anytime soon, and if you have questions about this sheet, you can comment below and I'll help you out as I can. Thanks.